Man, what's up, man? Man, let me tell y'all, we did a podcast today. Oh, man, it was fire. I need everybody to make sure that you are tuning in to the Secret to Success podcast um, Thursday. Man, we got a special, special guest on there. I'm going to just tell y'all, man, we had my brother Inky Johnson on there. Man, what's up, Catherine? Catherine Huff in the building. All right. Yep, y'all come on in. First time caller. What's up? Man, I'm going to bring a lot of y'all on today. I know last week, I was planning on bringing y'all in. And then, you know, I had CJ on here. And CJ was just, man, just took up the whole show, man. So, yeah, JJ Woods, say, send some love. Heart of Nebraska, what's up? Corn Husker State. I love it, man. Y'all come on in, man. What's up? What's up? Yup. Man, let's see. Rather say the struggle this week's episode. Yeah, man, no. But we got, uh, the podcast was fire, man. We just was... You know, touching up on some things. We got like a special announcement on the podcast. And so, yeah, it was all, uh, get my camera right, man. There we go. Yeah, so, yeah, we had, uh, man, it was really good. Everybody was on there. Man, the discussion was lit. Uh, man, it was deep, 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 deep. So, man, let's see. All right, you know what? I'm going to just jump into it, man. Let's see who on here on the podcast every Thursday. Now, I know that's right, man. Y'all go ahead and show some love. Yep, y'all show some love to the podcast, man. Um, we're about to do some big things, too, on the podcast, and you guys are going to hear about everything that's about to happen. So, man, we just got a lot going on. I did some schools. Um, I actually did some keynotes for some different high schools and grade schools um, to end the African American History Week. Um, yes, yeah, so I did that last week. I just been grinding, man. Just, you know, real estate side. I closed a couple deals. Um, but you know what? We can get into all that. I really want to, somebody said, I love your cap. Man, I got to get you one. Let's see. Was Eric ready today for the podcast? He was heated last week. Man, he was straight up heated. Um, I think he was good this week. Yeah, I think he was good this week. E, you know how E is, man. You never know who you're going to get. And it's crazy because we used to have like a set schedule for the podcast, but then now E always, he just get it. He's just feeling it in the spirit. And then E's just like, man, I feel it in the spirit, y'all. Let's get together. And I mean, sometimes y'all, E will send us text messages. Now, he lives on the West Coast right now, and so he's already two hours behind me. I get a text message at 3 in the morning. That's central. So it's like 1 in the morning out there. Like, that man does not sleep. Like, everything he talked about, like, that's that's real. Like, he does not sleep for real. So, but yeah, now nah, he was heated last week. I think he heated every week, actually. We just keep him calm. So, man, look, let's get into it. I think we got a few people in here. Yeah, we do. So, man, man, thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, man, I'm excited. For all y'all that just popped on my live and don't know what we're discussing, we are discussing the 9 to 5 millionaire. Don't quit your day job just yet. You can quit. You know what? I ain't even quit, though. I didn't quit. What I did, I finished, right? I finished. I finished the race. And so, yeah, so, man, I just, man, if you don't have the book, I'm telling you, get the book. It's not even a book. This is life changing. Everybody that's got the book, go ahead and drop something in there, man. Drop some hearts. Drop something in the comments, man, just to let people know. I'm going to type in here, actually, um, where to get the book from. Actually, go to 9to5millionaire.com, and then that's where you can get the book and the audio book. Um, you can get the audio book. You can get the, the, the workbook. Man, you can get everything. So, yep, I just pinned it right there. So, 9to5millionaire.com. The audio version. I was listening to the audio book today myself. Fire. Fire. It's something. Man, I'm going to tell y'all something. Like, I know everybody be trying to act like they professionals and all this stuff. Man, let me tell y'all. It's something when you're listening to your own audio book. When you're listening and you're getting motivated and inspired by listening to yourself speak and hearing your story. Um, I'm not joking. I was just listening to it today. And I had to actually pull over on the side of the road. I'm telling y'all some real stuff. I had to pull over on the side of the road just because I got choked up um, just listening to the story. And I was just like, man. And sometimes, you know, when you're going through something, you can't really, you know, you don't have time to be thinking about everything you're going through. You know, I mean, just think about my life right now. I'm going through a story right now just with E, CJ, the guys on the podcast, um, the conferences we're doing, make real estate real. And I'm not even thinking about that stuff right now. Right. So. I wasn't thinking about in that same kind of way. I wasn't thinking about when these things were taking place in my life. And now, though, to sit back and to really just, 
hear where, you know, where it came from, where I came from, and they really hear, like, the story and and um, everything I've been through, man. It's just, like I said, it's so inspiring. It's inspiring for myself to hear myself. Um, and then I'm even inspired just knowing that I did an audio book. Like, when I, I was just sitting there listening to it, like, I can't believe that I sat in here. I think I did, like, 15 hours, y'all. I did 15 hours in the studio. And I was just, like, going, man, and going. And to actually hear it now all come together, man, it's just unbelievable. What's up, April? I see you in here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, y'all. So nah, this is this is um, it's something else. So look, I'm gonna recap what we talked about last week, right? So everybody that was on here, I had CJ on, and uh, <laughs> y'all know CJ know how to push my buttons, right? Uh, CJ, he was, you know, pretty much we were talking about the conversation about, you know, how the system dreams for you. Everybody know what I'm talking about, right? When you're on your job, the system, meaning your job, they dream for you. And that's why, guys, in chapter three, we covered, like, man, you got to come up with a dream for yourself. And remember, when you're dreaming, your dream needs to be something that's almost, like, not even attainable. It needs to be something that's just crazy. Your dream is a dream, Right? It's a dream. That's the whole purpose of a dream. A dream is supposed to be something that's just like amazing. It's supposed to be something that when you wake up every single day, you're just like, oh my God, like this is unreal if I get this. A dream is supposed to change your life. And I think the, I think the, pro, I think the problem is, is that a lot of us, that we are dreaming too small. And that's like an oxymoron, right? Because a dream is supposed to be something that's so large. It's supposed to be something where you could just do anything. So in that last chapter, chapter three, it's like, man, what are you dreaming? I need some of y'all to ask yourself and write that down. Like, hey, what's up, Rashawn Scott? What's going on? Real estate broker from Chicago doing big things. We got to get together, man. But how are you dreaming? Like, what are your dreams? I want everybody to like straight up. We about to break this thing down. Like, just because you have a thought in your head. In my opinion, right? I'm just giving y'all my opinion. It's not really a dream. Like, I'm going to tell y'all, man, when I was younger, I used to dream just like that anything was possible. I would dream that I can just do anything. I remember, man, I used to dream that I could, I was living in this house. And this house was so large that I used to get lost in it. And I used to have this dream like years ago. I mean, as a teenager, I would have this dream again as a young adult and then I started having this dream even when I was you know an adult in the workforce I would have a dream that this house that I was in would I would get lost in it every time I came in this house it was the weirdest thing I mean it just had rooms upon rooms upon rooms and it seemed like it just never ended it seemed like every single room had its own like it was like a fantasy room every room had its own little thing it was a club in a room it was, uh, you know, a movie theater in a room. I had a swimming pool in the room. I mean, it was just crazy. And I think I got it from, truthfully, y'all watching, like, DuckTales as a kid. And I remember watching Scrooge McDuck. He used to go swimming, you know, in the vault in his house and all these coins. And so what's the, the craziest thing about it is the thing that I was dreaming about, the thing I was dreaming about, I now have. That club that I dreamed about, we in the club right now. <laughs> We in the club right now. All of these things came out of my vision. It came out of my head. It was from the dreaming that I created my reality. And I think some of you guys, reality is not what you wanted because your dream is so small. And that's why your reality is even smaller. So I ask you again, what are you dreaming? What are you dreaming? Just think about it. If your dreams are not large, then your reality guarantee can't be large. So I need you guys to start dreaming. And the way you take control of your dream is you literally focus on something. You put something on your mind so much that it's just embedded in your head. That image will not leave you. And it's just in your head. And, and, and even when you're laying down, when you're daydreaming, even in your, while you woke, this image, these, and then you, when you lay down now and you go to sleep, you focus on this thing before you go to sleep. And then when you go to sleep, you're going to go into that image that you've been just focusing on so much. And I promise you guys, and I said this before, I said this, that reality is not real, guys. Your imagination is real. 
and I can prove it. Everything and anything in this world that was created, it was first imagined. There's nothing, there's no thing that's created that wasn't first in somebody's mind. This book, this was just in my mind. And then I wrote down everything in my mind. And now all of a sudden, boom, I got a book. Everything, this phone that I'm on, this was somebody's imagination. Somebody thought of this. And now it's all of our realities. So reality does not shape imagination. Imagination shapes reality. I'm telling you guys, I need y'all to write that down. Get this. Because this is what's going to have you transition from your day job. This is what's going to transition you from that nine to five to that millionaire life. And see, millionaire does not necessarily mean just money. Millionaire means to be able to do whatever you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it. That's what millionaire means. It means not conforming to what your job tells you. It means not conforming to do the things that your job only pays you enough to do. So I'm telling you guys, all right? You have to dream. Oh, somebody said, you said that yesterday at the 120 conference. Oh, the 120 conference was fire. It was fire. So that was, um, you know, we talked about how the system dreams for you. But see, in the way the system dreams for you, right, the system will tell you, oh, you don't need to worry about anything outside of this job. You don't need to worry about nothing. All you need to worry about is focus on promotion. Focus on this job. And then if you focus on this job, we're going to promote you to the next level. And then, once you do well on the next level for the next five to ten years, then we're going to promote you again. And then, once you do good after those 20 years, we're going to give you another promotion. And then, once you finally reach 30 years, we're going to give you a watch. <laughs> we're going to give you a clock. And we're going to give you a pen. Have anybody ever thought, like, why do they give you a, a watch when you retire? And why they give you a, a pen? Y'all put it in the comment section. Like, like why? And I, I can tell you why. They give you the watch so that you can look at how much time, how much time either you have spent over the last 20 years, 30 years of your life working for them, or they give you this clock so you can count down how many years you got left. Not working for them, but how many years you got left to live. So y'all, I'm telling you, man, this stuff is deep, man. It's deeper than what you think, man. So the system dreams for you. They make it where their dreams become your dreams. Where you stop forgetting about the thing that you got inside of you. There's something inside of you. I promise you, it's something inside of everybody. There's some ET is just not the only blessed person in the world. Jamal, CJ, whoever, trust me, everybody has something inside of them. And my job, my duty, my responsibility, the reason why I wrote this book is to unlock whatever's inside of you. Oh, man, the world is waiting. I promise you, the world is waiting for whatever's inside of you. I'm telling y'all, look, I did make real estate real. I never wrote a course a day in my life. I never wrote a course a day in my life. I can't stand right naturally. I never wrote a course a day in my life. And then all of a sudden, I put, once I focused on it, I put down everything that I've been doing for the last 20 years. But see, when I created Make Real Estate Real, it wasn't something that I just created, right? It was already inside of me. Now we got over 6,000 people that's been blessed by this course. 6,000 in the last almost two years. That course was already inside of me, y'all. It was inside of me when I was in the squad car. Every single job I went to while I was a police officer, whether it was a, a traffic stop, shots fired, you know, a domestic dispute, I had to make real estate real already inside of me. I just didn't know it. I didn't know it. So it wasn't until I linked up with C.E. Carl that I put this thing on paper. I created it. And then when I created this course, now look at how it blessed so many people. So then I'm asking you, what is it that's inside of you? What is it that's inside of you? What is it that the world is waiting on that's inside of you that only you can bring to the world? All right. So but as long as you're allowing the system to dream for you, you're never going to bring that thing. You're never going to unlock that thing that's inside of you. Man, somebody I don't care. Look, I don't know how many people are here. 
don't even make a difference. I'm talking to that one. I said, all you need is one. So I'm talking to that one person. That one person that's on here that I'm talking to, man, show me some love right now. Put something up, hearts, grant, man, do whatever. I'm talking to that one person, that one world changer, that person that's about to change the world based off of something that's inside of them. You see, when you allow your company to dream for you, they are trying to have you dream within the system that they created. They want you to change their business. And don't get me wrong. You're supposed to do your job. All right. So I'm not telling y'all to please don't go back to your job on Monday, on Tuesday, talking about Jamal said not to dream for y'all. No, I'm just saying your job, you know, the work that you do for your job, when you go in there and you work them, them eight hours, them nine hours, you know, you're doing a service for them. They're paying you to do that service. Do it. Do it with all your heart, all your might. But let me tell you something. Them other 16 hours. What are you doing with those other 16 hours, man? Those other 16 hours belong to you. And some of y'all working harder for the company for eight hours than you do for yourself for 16 hours. I'm sitting here telling you, man, this is the difference maker. Somebody is going to be blessed. Some millionaires are going to be made. Some people are going to change their life based off of these 16 weeks that we're putting together right here. Because we are breaking this thing down. Somebody said, that's how we honor God. You are absolutely correct. God gave us life. He gives us vision. He gave us these dreams. What are you going to do with them? You can't just let, see, you can't just let, the, that's why you got to guard what you watch, guys. You got to guard what you read. You got to guard your ears, guys, guard your eyes, because these are the things that allow you to dream. And the more and more you get the wrong stuff inside your head, the more and more you start dreaming on the wrong stuff. So all I want you guys to do is start focusing on, focus on the direction of where you want to go in life. And that's why when we first started, I talked about what do you want, right? That's what my dad had talked to me about, right? What do you want? What do you want? You know, and some people maybe go get their children. They say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And there's nothing wrong with saying, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think that a lot of us, uh, like my siblings, you know, which I don't, you know, they, they're very successful. All of us are. But most people, you ask that question, no matter how old they are, they'll name a profession. They'll name a profession. I want to be a, a police officer. I want to be a teacher. And it's like, no, 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 no. I'm asking you, what do you want in life? Because whatever you want in life should go way past your profession. It should go way past your job. It should go, what is the name of the book? It's called The 9 to 5 Millionaire, Don't Quit Your Day Job. That's the name of the book. You can go to 9 to 5 millionairecom purchase it, join in. You get the audio book immediately. All right? So, your, what you want in life should go way past your job. And the reason why, don't get me wrong, somebody on here loves their job. And I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. Whatever. You love your job. Cool. But the thing about it is your identity should not be wrapped up in a job. It shouldn't be. Because what happens then when a company shuts down? What happens when a company shuts down? What happens when your job has to lay, lay you off? Are you no longer that person? What happens to your identity? See, I want you guys to start identifying way past your job, way past your nine to five, because the reason why, because there's so much more inside of you. There are so much, there's so much more inside of you. I promise you, we just got to unlock it. We just got to figure out. We got to figure out what's inside of you, but it's all going to start with you. You're the only person that can answer that question. Guys, it's certain things that I'm finding out about myself that I promise you. I promise you, I didn't know, I didn't know that I, I didn't even know I could speak. I did not know that I was a motivational speaker. I promise you, I didn't find out until I was about 40 years old. But over the years, when I look back over my life, over the years, whenever I was on a football team or whenever I was on any kind of team, my coach would always say, King, get the break. King, get the break. Before the games used to start, some of my teammates would be sitting back waiting for me to say something. I didn't know, y'all. But my job... My job never was like, hey, King, 
We need you, when you lock up these criminals, we need you to go ahead and take them in the back cell and go speak to them. They never said that. My job never brought out the gift that was inside of me. Oh, man. I'm sitting here telling you guys, man. Your dream, whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing is actually inside of you. It's already there. I just need you to dream now. God is going to speak to you. He's going to reveal what it is that's inside of you. When you open your eyes up, when you open your eyes up and really start and really stop just dreaming in the system that your job created for you, and you really start dreaming in the real dream that's been given to you, you're going to open your eyes up. You're going to see that, 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 that it was already with you. It was already with you from the beginning. Like I said, ever since I was a kid, I would all, everybody would always have me do the team break. I would always, I would be that one on the team that's telling the other teammates, you know, hey, y'all, man, let's go get them, y'all. Hey, man, look, dude, look, it's now or never. I was always that person. And now God just amplified the thing that I was doing so small back in the day. That's why I love home small beginnings, all right? So, um, oh, something else we covered. Why wealth? Or having money is not evil. Why wealth or having money is not evil? You know, growing up, man, you know, you hear a lot of times where people kind of almost like, you know, man, being wealthy, man, rich people are just evil, man. They're just evil. Oh, they just so greedy. And don't get me wrong. There are greedy people. Yes, it's greedy rich people. It's greedy poor people. <laughs> it's greedy in everything that you do. All right? It's greedy in everything that you do. But... I've always felt like my reasoning for wanting to have more didn't come from a uh, selfish place, all right? It came from a place of wanting to bless others. It came from a place of wanting to expose others to a different way of life. It came from a place of wanting to be able to give my family, y'all, give my family the full experience of life. Y'all hear me talking about that, right? The full experience of life. There's a lot of people that's alive, but you're not living. Man, somebody really hear what I just said. There's a lot of people that's alive, but you're really not living. You're not getting the full experience of life. Like you're not doing everything in life that it is that you want to do. You're doing the things in life that you can afford to do. We're going to talk about that, that. That left side of the menu type living. And so, you know... Um, you know, money, you know, you can donate money like I do to some charities, right? You can donate money to nonprofits. You can, you know, help out, you know, children or, or different families that's, that's in under, underdeserved areas, underserved areas, excuse me. And, and, you know, they don't have resources. You know, you can create some type of school and, and help give healthy food. I remember when Camilla and I started the daycare centers. You know, I remember the children that would come to our daycare centers, a lot of them, like these were the only meals. Now, I'm not talking about food. This was the only meals, though, that they were going to get where it was a healthy meal, where they were actually going to get vegetables and get, you know, uh, protein and things like that. And I was like, wow, this is like, you know, this is important because this deals with their health. There's so many children that you hear about that's got um, uh, child diabetes and, you know, and it's because of a lot of the garbage that they're eating. And maybe they're eating that garbage because their family can't afford a certain kind of, you know, meal. And so I was just like, wow, this is, I can make a difference in these families' lives by the way we feed them. You know, by the way we educate them. You know, just by the exposure that we give them. So, you know, money is not evil. It's what you do with it that makes it evil. All right? So it's what you do with it. So you can go ahead and, you know, take a bunch of your money and just donate it to church if that's what you choose to do. You know, rebuild the community. You can use this in so many different ways. The way I chose to do it, and I was talking about this a little bit on the podcast. And so I love when I go into an area and I fix up properties in that area. You know, when I fix up properties in that area, I'm not just fixing it up for me, but I'm fixing it up for everybody else that's in that community. The number one um, wealth building creation is like, you know, usually real estate. And so most people that's, you know, got a nine to five, the equity in your home, that adds towards your net worth. But, you know, a lot of people don't even really know what net worth is. And that's your assets minus liabilities. All right. And whatever that equals, that's your net worth. And so when I go into an area and I put my all in this area. When I fix up these properties where other people don't really want to come in this area and fix these properties up, 
I don't fix it up like it's garbage. I actually make the value of this area go up. So now the Miss Johnson, um, Miss Miss Canty, Miss whoever, whoever's living on the same block now, it raises their equity. It raises the value of their property now. It makes their property more valuable. And then now Miss Johnson can refinance her house and then now take some of this added equity that I brought to the neighborhood. She can take that money now and send her kids to college. How is money evil when you're doing something like that? Come on, man. Like I said, it's what you decide to do with it that makes it evil or not. So I just believe that we can go ahead and be world changers. Somebody said make real estate real would literally change the globe. Amen. Amen. And I'm claiming that. I'm touching and agreeing with you. It definitely will change the globe. And it's already changing the globe. We got people in Africa. We got people in the UK. We got people in Australia. We got people all over the world that's finally saying, like, man, I can be part of this. I can go ahead and I can, I can get a piece of American pie, whatever you want to call it. I can do something for my family. I can do something for my community. You see, here it is, man. I was riding around in a squad car in my community. I was working in the area I grew up in. Y'all feel me on this? I was working in the area that I grew up in. And I was sitting there and here it is, man. They wanted me to put tickets, you know, certain communities. They want you to just go around and go look at cars and see who has expired license plates and, and expired tags on the cars. And then they want you to go write them cars tickets and, you know, and bring in revenue for the city. And I was like, man, this ain't how I wanted to help out the community. I didn't come back to my neighborhood to, 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 to oppress them. You got me mistaken. I came back, man, to help them. And so I started realizing that, all right, cool, the way I can do real impact is by fixing up these abandoned properties on, in the community. You know, the way I can do real change, real change is by fixing up, raising the equity in these areas so that people, my people can have more equity in their homes. Any, any single area that I fix up a property in, I wanna leave my blueprint. I wanna leave my imprint in that property, in that area, on that community. I want to literally be the changing force on that block. See, that goes back to my dreaming big, guys, what I talked about in the book. It goes back to dreaming big. So I can ask you again, how large are you drinking? I mean, how large are you dreaming? How large? How large? Like, I want you to go in. Somebody said Ghana. Much love, bro. That's what's up, man. I, that's the place I'm about to go. I want to go visit Ghana. I want to go back and just visit, man. That's big. That's on my list, a place to go. All right, so that we covered about money not being evil. Um, why time is more important than money? Why time is more important than money? All right, y'all, so the wealthy believes that time is your greatest asset. Man, I promise you, I promise you. The wealthy believes that time is your greatest asset. I done set up and talked to millionaires, multimillionaires. I even set up and had dinner several times with billionaires. Time, they all said it. Time is your greatest asset, not money. But now I sit up and I talk to a lot of people that don't have money. Oh, I talk to people that's just, man, looking for money everywhere. Just, I need money, Jay. Jamal, please, man. Man, I need money. I need money. I need money. And they believe that money is your greatest asset. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. This is why I'm so passionate about this. I'm passionate about this so that I can allow you guys to first show you that time is your greatest asset. And the reason why time is your greatest asset and that money, just look at it. A billionaire or a millionaire or whatever, your job, they're paying you for your time. They're giving up their money to pay you for your time. They're not giving you time. They're giving you money for your time. And then when you work past them eight hours, they call it what? Overtime. We want you to go overtime. We want to take more than the time that we already had a lot. We want you to go overtime and we're going to pay you time and a half. And we just be like, oh my God, I'm about to make time and a half. Oh, they want me to stick around for four more hours. Even though I did eight hours, they just want me to do four more hours. 
Oh, man, that's what's up. They about to pay me, man. I'm getting over on them. I'm getting over on them. See, the thing is, is that the money that they even paying you with, they got plenty of it. They can't even spend it. But the time that they're getting from us, we can never get that time back again. Guys, time is so important. Time is so precious. Time. We've been on this call right now for 33 minutes and that time is gone. That's why I want to bring so much value because you're sharing your time with me right now and you can never get that time back. That's why you got to be so cautious on who you're giving your time to and what you're giving your time to. I'm telling you, who and what you're putting your time to. You can never get it back again. Once it's gone, it's gone. That's how you get over. You got to break down your schedule and you got to understand, account for every single minute, every single second, every single second that you're breathing, you need to account for that second. Every single moment that you're woke, account for those minutes. Every day, account for it because you can never get it back again. Yeah, you're going to get another day. Yeah, you're going to get more seconds. But you'll never get another day or seconds in this form. You know, I, you know, of course, I've, I've, I've been here before. It's March the 1st. I've been, you know, I had a March last year. But that March last year, I was a different age. The circumstances were different. Matter of fact, March last year at this time, I was in London, I believe. So but now I'm at another March, but I'm another year older. So guys, don't take this lightly. A lot of people have passed during this time period. And anybody, and we brought this up in the call last week, anybody that was on their deathbed, or if you woke up one of these people that passed away, and you woke them up and you just asked them, like, man, what, what, if I can just give you one wish right now, what, what do you want? What do you want? I guarantee you they're not going to say, man, I want, I want more money. They're not going to be concerned about the promotion on their job. They're going to say, man, I wish I had more time. This happened unexpected. I promise you, I did not know that this was the last year that I was going to be alive. Man, I promise you, this was the, I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know that this was going to be the last March that I was ever going to be alive. I didn't know that I wasn't going to be here this summer. If I would have known that, I would have prepared myself. I wouldn't have did overtime on my job. I would have focused on my time with my family. I would have focused on my time with my God. I would have focused on my time with whatever. So I'm asking you, man, don't fall for the trick. This time thing that they're giving you, a paying you a time and a half for, you can't never get it back. That's why all of this journey that we're coming up with is important. Because what it's going to show you is going to show you how to, it's going to show you how to get back your time. It's going to show you how to do what it is they do. What up, Kevin? Ha <laughs> ha, audio one, my man. Yeah, it's going to show you this. So guys, come on, man. All right? Let's see. Um, yo, why time is more important than money? How the 1% uses time as an asset while the blue collar worker sells their time. You know, and I just talked about that. So, man, that's what we went over, guys, last time. And, um, you know, right now, we're going over chapter four, all right? Chapter four, which is all-star. I'm telling y'all, man, look, I don't just be, even though I wrote the book, this is my life, I still go through the book. I'm going through the book with y'all. Like, I'm literally going through it, highlighting, putting asterisks, marking stuff. And then after I read the chapter, I listen to the audio book on that part. And then just to get in the mold, man. And so, man, with the book, uh, chapter four, man, this was the part of my life, y'all. And it's called All Star. This was the part of my life where I was just like, man, I just, I was, I was in, I was, I was like a kid still. And I kind of, you know, I, I, I wanted, I knew that I wanted to um, be a millionaire, but I was kind of like, okay, this is, I'm going to choose football. And so football was going to be my vehicle. All right. Football was going to be my vehicle. I seen people playing football, the greats and Deion Sanders, Bo Jackson, all these guys. And man, and somebody said, you're giving us the vaccine for life. I understand. I understand. Come get your shot right now. And you don't even need two parts. All right. You don't even need two parts. It's a one part shot. And it's going to work for the rest of your life. And it's going to get passed down to the next generation. So it's going to be in your DNA. All right. So 
This was the part where I just, man, I just was so excited about life. You couldn't tell me nothing, man. I just knew that my, my life was just going to be just straight perfect. I knew that I was going to make it to the NFL. I was doing everything right. You know, I said I was going to play football, and I was putting in the work. I understood in order for me to make it on that high level that I had to put in the work. And so during this time period, I was doing everything right. I'm over here uh, working out every single day. I was on my high school football team. And on my high school football team, team captain, you know, made all city, all state. You know, I was just doing everything right. I even remember a time where, like, my parents would, for each of my siblings, when we turned 15 years old, they would give us this huge birthday party. And they would invite everybody over. And um, they would spend a lot of money on these parties, you know, a, you know, a couple hundred, few hundred back then. But that was a lot, you know. And they would, the whole, everybody on the block would come over and cake and ice cream. You know, we would have a big party or whatever. And it was time for me. It was my freshman year. I turned 15 years old. And I remember I was playing football, but I was starting as a freshman. And then I remember, I'll never forget, we was playing against this school. And I got beat deep. I was playing cornerback. And... I lost my starting spot, y'all, as a true freshman in high school. And I remember, you know, talking to uh, my parents. I remember looking at the Michigan was the, like the number one team, Michigan the Wolverines. They were like the number one team in football. And I remember saying, seeing that they had a football camp. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have to go to that camp. I told my parents, I don't want to party. I don't want nobody coming over my house. I know where I'm going in life. Then my destination is multimillionaire. My vehicle is playing football. I need to go ahead and sharpen up my skills so I can get there to my destination. And so I went. My parents paid for me to go to Michigan football camp. I went there by myself. It was a week-long camp. Went there. I got exposed, right? I got exposed to the greats, to the number one football team in the country. And we were there with the training of the coaches. I was around other top football players. And then all of a sudden, something happened inside of me where I picked up the traits of these other top football players all around the country. Something happened inside of me where I picked up from exposure, right? I picked up um, how to be uh, the top, how to, a top football program look. Then I came back to my school, and not only, you know, did I get my starting spot back, I only played two games on the sophomore team, and then I went to varsity, and I started starting on varsity as a sophomore. And it all happened because of the exposure. First, it happened because I knew what my destination was, and then I chose a vehicle. I chose the vehicle, right, to get to that destination. So, you know, I want, I want... I want to talk to somebody and I want to hear what's, what are you guys' destinations? Like, have you identified what your destination is? All right, so let me, let me, some of them bring some people on. Let's see. I'll bring some people on. Let's see. Let's see. All right, said, so, yep, I am going to, let's see, Ed. Oh, no, oh, no. Yep, so, I see you in there. If you're on here, man, tell me about your. Tell me about your, your destination, bro, and what's your vehicle? Like, have you actually picked the destination? And I think a lot of times people get it confused. People get destinations and vehicles confused all the time. And I think because the school system, right, the school system tells you to pick a major early on. They want you to pick a major. They, you know, what's your major? Pretty much at 17, 16 years old, they're asking you what job do you want to have? And so the school system should start asking you, like, man, what's your destination? As opposed to pick a major. They should say pick a destination. And then when you pick that destination, then now you should have some counselor or some mentor that says, all right, great. Let's go ahead and let's pair up some destinations to match, I mean, some vehicles to match that destination that you got for yourself. So let me see. Whoever wanted to jump on here. I thought I just, uh, yep, he goes, somebody is unable to join. All right, so let's go to Julie. I see you are here. Come on, Julie. Somebody said, let's see, uh, destination is living by country with enough resources to help fuel other dreams. Yep, yep, let's see. All right. All right, yep, here we go. I guess I'm doing it right. <laughs> you would think I would have this down packed by now. I sent the request, so come on now. 
Yeah, there we go. What's Yo, going on, bro? What's up, Mo? What's, what's, what's up, up, baby? What's going on, man? I'm, ex I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I'm just here on the chat. Uh, you know, I just picked up the book. Today. All right, all right. Let's go. Let's go. Find a five millionaire, you know. My wife, she actually got this for me uh, for my birthday. We we in investments right now. Okay. <laughs> All right. So when, yeah. when was your birthday? First off, uh, my birthday. No, it's coming up. It's March fifteenth. So it was an early gift. Oh, that's what's up, bro. Congratulations. Yeah, Happy yeah. birthday, man. Oh, yep. Hope yeah, you yeah. enjoy Thank your birthday you. gift. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, you know, I've been at it working on the course um, nonstop every morning before school. Okay. And you said it right, like a lot, hold on baby, hold on baby. Uh, the, the school doesn't really teach you, they don't really prepare you to ask that question. They're like, oh, I'm about to sink you in a job yeah. and you're about to be stuck for the next 10 years. And I'm looking at everybody like, uh-uh, I'm not doing that, uh-uh. I said, that's why I'm getting up, four o'clock a.m. I don't care. Sometimes I fall asleep at, at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock wow. because I'm grinding, you know, like every day, day in and day out. And I was just talking to my daughter and it's like, I see her and I'm like, I got to get it for her every day. Like, I don't care if I'm tired. I don't care if I got a test. Um, I don't care if, if, if I'm just grinding, you know, and you and the community have really given me a space and a place where it's like, I'm getting the inspiration to know that other people are going through it and and we we making it together. We we yeah. doing this together. Um yeah, and so for me, my vehicle is is dance right now. Like I got a full ride to the University of Texas in Austin. And wow. so nice. um, sixty three thousand nice. dollar scholarship. Um, Congratulations. And so you know, thank you, thank you. God bless. All glory to God. Yeah. And um, you know, you you kept saying like how do you leverage your opportunities? And so right now, I hooked up with, uh, I'm on the credit portion. And, uh, you know, she was talking about, you got to fix your credit. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to leverage the school loan, the student loan. I'm going to get my stuff together. You know what I'm uh, saying? I'm going a, I'm to a leverage that and then put that on my down payment as my first property. Let's go. So <laughs> I'm about to form the LLC later on this month. So oh, you know let's do I'm it. Like, I'm, all, I'm telling you, like, they, they out here playing. Like, this is real. Like. This is, it's on my wall, nine to five millionaire. You know what I'm saying? Wow. The cost of the future you, oh, the current cost of you. Like, nobody's playing around here. Like, we not playing no games. Make real estate real. So let me ask you something then. So, like, what's your, you told me your vehicle. What's your destination? Like, and I want you my to think about it, bro. Think about it, all right? We talk about destinations. <laughs> and, and it's okay if your destination is, is something small. But I want you to, have you ever dreamed? First off, have you ever dreamed? Like, really, really dreamed? Did you set your destination on a dream or did you set your destination on your job? I, I you know, honestly, before I, I definitely put it on my job because, you know, by trade, I'm an artist. Mm. And so I was like, oh, if I could just accomplish this and if I could just accomplish that, then I have my daughter and like, you know, the, the applause wasn't paying the bills. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like. And, and uh, I realized like a lot of people in my position, they were struggling in the same way that I was, whether they were faculty for a school or not, mm -hmm. they were still struggling in the same way. So I'm like, hold on, wait, like whether they was getting gigs or not. And I was like, nah, like, so for me, like me and my wife were talking about it. My wife is, um, she's the love of my life, but she has a child education and she dances just like me. Okay. And so, you know, just like you and your wife, we were like, okay, let's get these properties. Let's get this daycare started because yep. she's already doing elementary daycare and let's start this dance studio. And so, wow. you know, I, I want to open up a chain, franchise it out and uh, just start like teaching people because our, our work is, you know, we teach people how to express themselves authentically, yeah, like through, through movement. And so it's like more people, especially black males, black females, we need a platform to be able to do that, like, and it to be safe. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I just want to open up a couple of franchises and teach people, teach disenfranchised youth how to do that. Yeah. Because that's what was done for me. Yep, that's big, so, bro. Yeah. So then what you do is, and while you were yes. talking, I just thought about even how Camilla and I got started with the daycares. 
you know, and make real estate real. I know you haven't been all the way through it, but we talk about have a purpose for every property you purchase, right? Yeah. Now, it's one thing to go to the bank and say, you know, I, I really love dance. I'm an artist. My wife is an artist, and we really love dance. We want to do a studio. Everything you just said, we want to do this for uh, disenfranchised children in the community. They're going to look at you and just be like, um, hmm. <laughs> and, and a lot of people will allow that to shoot down your dream. Right? They allow this lender, this banker on the other side of this desk to shoot down your dream. It's not even his money, right? He's there yeah, working a nine to five just like everybody else. But he's there. Mm -hmm. He's in between your dream. And at that point, a lot of people just walk away. And you know what they say? Well, I guess it wasn't meant to be. They tell themselves, <laughs> man, I guess it wasn't meant to be. And then they'll say, okay, well, I guess it wasn't meant to be, babe. So I guess we can't open up this dance studio. No, I'm telling you, brothers, meant to be. Or well, if it's meant to be, yeah. I used to tell Camille all the time. If it's meant to be, it's up to you and me, baby. If it's meant yeah. to be, if it's meant yes. to be, it's up to you yes. and me. Like it ain't, it's us yes. against the world. Like seriously, we can do this. You know, yeah. me plus you plus God equals success all day. So Come what? On. So man, Come so on. what I want you to do, bro? You got your why? You got your blueprint now, right? So now, bro, yes, use real estate, leverage real estate, leverage this course so that you can go ahead now and use the net proceeds from this money, bro, from these properties to start your studio, man, them kids. And then while you're doing this, like, do this with a passion and a sense of urgency. Like, man, every time you don't open up one of these facilities, one of these children now fall off to the wayside. Oh, no, nah, I can't have that. Oh, it's already can't taking place. And it's really the reason why I told you to use that as motivation, because it's actually true. That's how the mindset yeah. we had with daycare centers. I was like, look, every time we don't open up a daycare center in this community, is a kid now that possibly may be getting shot in Chicago. Or is a kid now that's possibly uh, uh, uh. getting put in the system. Or something is happening to them. Are they going into the system? DCFS. It's bigger oh. than just child care. Or is a kid that's not getting the education that we're going to teach them? It's bigger than yes, that, sir. man. You know, yes, so sir. every time when, when, when we come up with something, we may always make it larger than ourselves. And so, bro, yes, go grab your wife's dog by the arm, bro, and you already got yes. the vision. Y'all dream on it tonight. How large do you want this thing to be? Oh, we want it to be large, Ma. I'm talking about worldwide, international, global. Like, and, man, and, you and, got and me. do you believe well, that it can happen? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Or I, I wouldn't be working the way I was. Absolutely. Yeah, so I now do it with a sense of urgency, bro. Just know that there's some kid out there right now and i promise you it's so true there's some kid out there right now that's waiting on you to bring about what's inside of you just like what i just got through saying with make real estate real i promise you bro i'm in a squad car resting people i'm in a squad car chasing people getting shot at doing all of this yeah. stuff and here it yeah. is god had a nation inside of me that i was gonna bless and educate and teach and train Come on. Here it is. Come on. You got the nine to five million on your wall. You read and your wife is giving this to you for your birthday. It's about to bless you guys, take you guys to the next level, make real estate real is. And I'm out in the squad yeah. car not even knowing that this is inside of me. Yeah. But that's why it was yeah. a sense of urgency, bro. If I was not yeah. obedient to what it was that I had inside of me, then if I said, no, I'm going to wait another two years. I'm going to wait another three. You know what, man? I'm going to work for 30 years. And I'm going to just forget about what's already inside of me. I'm going to just wait on it. Then you wouldn't be doing yep. what it is you're doing now. You see how that works? Right. Now yes, it's somebody yes. else. And I said this early on the call, bro. Everybody got something inside of them. Everybody. Yes. And the world is waiting for what you got. So you got to do this with a sense of urgency. Please don't yep, wait on yep, it. Sir. Don't sit back and think that you got more than enough already to get started, bro. Yeah. I'm not playing with it. And, and here goes my family. I just wanted to introduce you. Hey, hey, my daughter. how y'all doing? <laughs> yeah, just what, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we listen, all of us are listening to you on Monday. So, like, you're, you're, you're putting fire in our soul. Like, we're, we're in here. Wow. Like, we, yes. And, and so we just want to thank you from the bottom of our heart. Everybody who's on the team, like, uh, the Make Real Estate Facebook page, like, the encouragement, the love, the infrastructure you built is is changing lives. And like I'm like overwhelmed with gratitude, Ma. Like literally when I said in my message, you are the Moses of this generation, 
and you're really freeing our people. And wow. man, I'm just, I'm getting emotional about it because it's like, you know, a lot of people get on, but they don't, they don't look back. And when I, when I see you at work and you doing this for our people, man, I, you know, I can't even, I can't even explain it, man. So thank you with all of my heart. Like, I know it's going to change everything. Like, I know it's going to change everything for me and my family. And I'm telling I'm just keeping, I'm keeping it on the Underground Railroad right now because I want to do the exact same thing that you're doing. I want to reach back and pull them up. Man, and bro, so, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Keep that passion. Like, keep that passion. The thing you're feeling right now is good, bro. Bottle it up. Keep, okay. keep I don't know how record this. I, man, I'm going to put this video up, bro. Keep this passion. Remind yourself why you're doing this. I promise you, yes, that sir. same feeling, dog, I'm looking in your eyes right now. That same feeling that you got to make it, that I'm telling you, that's what I had. That's what got me yes. through so many days. And I promise you, bro, everything, that feeling that you have, I love it. And I love that you're being vulnerable, bro, and you're showing it because that's what I had at the time. And that's what got me through. That's, bro, that's yes. what got me through to where I'm at today. That was the fuel that I had, bro, that got me to where I am today. And to be able to be on yes. this side now, and 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 see everything that I once bro cried for, everything that I once prayed on, everything I got it all right now. I got it all yes, right sir. now, bro. So I'm telling you, it's possible. Yes. I'm telling you, Thank you that it's going to happen, bro. Just keep believing. Keep believing yes, sir. and keep seeking out what doing what you're doing. Keep seeking out this knowledge. Keep exposing yes, yourself, bro. You heard me say your level of exposure will always determine your level of success. Yes, sir. Bro, that's not no cap, bro. That's that's real talk. Your level of exposure, bro. And you've been exposed. I'm telling you now, you've been exposed to a man of God. You've been exposed yes, to a man who who actually has a heart for people. You've been exposed yes, to a man, bro, that want to see other people win. Yes. So, bro, it's yes, over you right now. Take this information and run with it, man. And my prayer for you and my prayer for your family is that God bless you with double, with double. Uh, than what he's blessed my family with, bro. And I mean that. I pray over we your were, daughter, bro, over your wife, over you, that the God, literally the same God that has blessed my family, bro, does double for you and your family, thank, bro. Thank you, man. I receive it. We receive it in agreement. We hear. Thank you so much, Ma. Like, and I, I promise you, I promise you, one day after this conversation, I'm going to hit you up with a call, and you're going to be like, what, what happened? And I'm going to be like, yo, we just, we... Yeah, what you prayed happen, I'm about to sow a seed, a generous seed. I promise you. I <laughs> promise you. And I know I know I can't I can't even I can't even get close to your pockets, but I'm gonna do something <laughs> that's radical, like that you never see, bro. Like, no, nah, just do me a favor. When you when you make it, bro, just make sure that you show other people. Don't keep it to yourself. For some reason, yes, we've sir. been led yes, astray sir. that when you make it, you gotta keep it to yourself. Yes, sir. Expose other people, bro. Expose other people, yes, man. Remember, dog, we are blessed to be a blessing, all right? Sir, yes, sir. All right, Thank man, you. I want to hear Thank great you. things. Hit me up. Keep me posted. Shoot me a message in the video, man, all right? All right, God bless, man. We Peace out from the Rochelle yep. family. All right, family, I'll talk to y'all. All right. You just hit the X up there. Wow. Man, y'all, I can't even make this stuff up, man. That was that was deep. That was deep, man. Let's all... Uh, Man, let's see. Somebody said, I told y'all Jamal was a real one, genuine dude, for real. Man, I appreciate y'all, man. Man, that's got me all, you know what I'm saying? It's like some onions up here or something, man. <laughs> now, I just love, this is what I love. This is what I love, y'all. When you've been called to do something. You know what? Let me get somebody else on. Yeah, while well, we got a little time. Let me get somebody else on. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, somebody said God is amazing. Yes, yes. Yeah, somebody said, wow. Man, this is man, this is so good, y'all. I just love seeing people taking care of their families. Hello. Hello, I'm coming. All right. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Let's go. All right. I'm trying to get on. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was trying. My phone don't work in all areas of the house. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. There you go. Let's see if I bring your phone down a little bit more. 
Okay, down, down, there down. You go, right there. Bro, there you go. Okay. How you doing? Yeah, I'm trying to stay in one spot because it don't work in all the areas that <laughs> I, I understand. I understand. All right. So <laughs> I was just trying, trying to say because I finally got the book. I've been listening for ever since episode 105. So I started oh. listening when you first came on um, the podcast. So I was excited to see that you finally got this going. And I hate that I missed. When you had the book in December, I didn't see that, you know, you were putting the book out there. So yeah. I just got it recently. I'm listening to it. my husband and he's doing the dog leashes when I put the, um, that he's got the dog leashes in his vehicle. But mine was the name that you see, the Lati Dolly. So here, here come the husband and the dog. Jamal, what's hey. up, man? How you doing, What's bro? up, bro? What's going on, man? Hey, hey, you, look, let's move. Hey, move. You want to hear something funny? I'll tell you something real quick. Listen. Jumped out the shower, oh, bro. Yeah, put the phone back Look. up. There you go. You said what? Hey, but we missed it. Listen. Wait. You gotta hold it still. You know we're gonna lose it. Hold on, let me turn the volume up so I can hear. Okay, I'm listening. Now, say that. I heard you say was something funny. Tell me you say I wanna hear something funny. Oh, 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 I said, yeah, because she came running upstairs. I just jumped out the shower. <laughs> 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 but look, it's all good. Listen, we, we appreciate what you do. And when I walked in the door today, I went came from the gym. And I heard you talking about time. So anybody else that's on here that's listening and could hear, mm -hmm. that was the most important thing that you could ever say right now, uh, the, the importance of time, you know, because every second makes a difference. Um, so, so anyway, my, go ahead. No, 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 I'm just listening. I'm just saying, you're hitting it right oh, in the right okay. head, bro. So, so my business is, is quality leashes. What I do is I make training dog leashes training leashes for, for trainers. Okay. And I also stock, you know, uh, uh, small shops like grooming facilities, uh, uh, boarding hotels. And that's my vehicle to get to my destination, which is the family banquet hall. The family the banquet hall. Family banquet hall. Tell me a little so bit about that. Be, so what it's going to be is some, it's going to be somewhat like an, a resort for people to have family uh, picnics, um, uh, weddings, um, anything that brings family together. So the reason for that is my family always had a difficult time getting together, and we still do to this day. You know, I'm, I'm I, I ain't no different from any other guy that's from the hood. It's from straight from the hood. You know, and our family always had a difficult time getting together. It's always, hey, I don't have the money. I, I you know, everybody got to bring money in. So, you know, my dream was, this is my dream. I want to have it, that family banquet hall, so nobody has to pay for nothing. Everybody that's in the family, get to, it's no reason that you don't want to be there, that you shouldn't be there is because you just don't want to be there. So it won't be food. It won't be transportation. It won't be any excuse that you can use that you can't come to this family banquet hall. But it'll also be an event center where I'll rent out for people that want to go to, uh, 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 if they want to use it as a wedding, Use it for a wedding. Use it. It's going to be somewhat like a resort. So just picture, picture the resort, and you're having a family bank. You're having a family picnic, and it's an indoor and outdoor. So we're in Cleveland, Ohio. So it could snow. It could rain. So I want to have the event to where have the hall where no matter if it rains, if it snows, we could still have the party. His family still could get the, the bottom line is for family to get together. Other than let me ask you something. What's man? That's that bro. That's I love the unselfishness with that. What's your experience in real estate? Uh, you know what? I just got burnt not too long ago in real estate, yes. and that wasn't that wasn't. You know what? That I figured I, I realized I was doing it for money and not for the purpose. See, so that's where you know I went to one of those uh, one of those uh, uh, events that was held at a hotel, oh. and what's that? What's that guy? That million dollar guy? That Robert Kiyosaki. The million dollar listing. Oh, the no, one no, guy, okay. Yeah, and and they had Armando the guys go or something like that. Yeah, and they had me pay fifteen hundred dollars and gave me all of this information, and I could just see right through it. I say, this is garbage. You know, they gave me some valuable information. Now, I will say this: although it wasn't positive and working for me, I got some positive information from there that I can apply to some somewhere else. Although to me, it was a scam. Well, you let me know, tell you so something, bro. You should have came to make real estate real. I <laughs> promise you, that is the number one real estate course in the country. 
And it's no yeah. scam. Matter of fact, I'm even, you know, I'm even, my, Make Real Estate Real is actually accredited now in Cleveland at Lakewood University. And so I'm Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah, I'm a professor, Professor King. And uh, Lakewood University is in, based in Cleveland. I'm about 10,000 yeah. students, and I teach Make Real Estate Real every single Wednesday. But, um, yeah, bro, no. So, look, this is what, this is what, because I know my team is telling me, like, Jamal, you're going over time again. This is what I want to <laughs> do, because you've been burnt by somebody else. I want to make sure that we make that up for you in your life. So I want you to send me a DM with your information, and I want to bless you with Make Real Estate Real. So you've lost $1,500 <laughs> with that course. I'm going to give you a $2,000 course for free. And I'm going to give it to you, so you can go through this course. And not only do you go through this course, I even got the team of people to help you along the journey, bro. There's no upcharge. There's no, we got over 6,000 people came through this course. And I, everybody that's on here right now, they can probably see put messages on here. This is like something you've never seen before. Oh, man, that's, that's, I really, I truly appreciate that. You yeah. know, I don't, I, I mean, uh -huh. hey, it's, it's all, we get a glory to God, man. Thank God. Yeah. Yep. You know, because you wouldn't be able to do what you do without him. So, so Amen. let's get a glory to him. Thank you, and thank thank him, and thank you. Yep. You know yep. what I'm saying? I appreciate. You got to put me in a conversation, bro. Thank him. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I can't. I don't even want to follow up after God. It's just we did that. <laughs> you dig that for sure. Oh, you make bro. it all happen. Hey, but don't so take what, my what, blessing away from me. <laughs> I, did, I hear you. Because he gave it to us. He gave it to us. Absolutely, but, bro. Wait, I don't want to go too much over your time, but, you know, the one thing, I wanted to make sure that I was in my purpose. See, I didn't want to do anything just to make some make some money. You know, the money will come to me after I find out what my purpose is. Yep. You, you follow me? Is that is that true? Did that work for you? You found out what your purpose was, and then the money chased you. Now, I got the money first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Actually, go. I got the money first, all right? But, okay. I will, but I will say this. The purpose was already inside of me, all right? There you go. So the purpose was already inside of me, and along the journey of getting the money, God positioned me so that so my purpose is to do what I'm doing now. I can okay. do what I'm doing now and teach people how to create generational wealth. I couldn't teach people how to take care of their families and how to set up the next generation unless I did it first in my life. Okay. So in that mindset, while I was getting it, right, I was, God was positioning me to be able to do what it is I'm doing today, but not just talking about it like a lot of people on social media just talk about it and they don't really exemplify it in their lives. Right. And so, you know, so yes, I did have income I did have businesses beforehand, but I can tell you it's nothing compared to what I have now, now that I'm walking in purpose. Bro, oh, yeah, that's what's up. Time, I used to want to own a thousand properties, you know, a thousand units. Oh man, that's a thousand, a thousand units. Right. Now, while I'm in purpose now, God has blessed me to not just renovate a thousand properties, but to, but to renovate the mindsets of millions of people. There you go. Oh, People pay way more dividends than properties ever can. Yes. There's no property that could ever pay me more dividends than what blessing a person could pay. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So when you walk in purpose, bro, you're going to know it's going to feel right. It's going to feel good in every single area. You can't even fail. Anything and everything <laughs> you do, bro, it's going to just work. I get on stage and I don't even know what I'm going to talk about sometimes. <laughs> and all of a sudden, words just come out of my mouth. And it's the times that I don't know what I'm going to say is when I get the standing ovation. It's the right. times when I don't prepare that I get the standing ovation because I'm in purpose, bro, and I'm speaking from my heart. You know, so just keep on walking in purpose. But, you know, at the same time, don't, you know, you don't have to say, oh, I, I'm not going to get income. I'm not going to. No, income is going to allow you to walk in purpose fully. Okay. Because beforehand, when I didn't have enough income, I had to make sure I had to take care of the bills. So part I'm, here it is. I'm, I'm working to try to take care of bills and try to take care of my household. But at the same time, that purpose was waiting on me. Your purpose is already with you. And I was telling this to everybody on here. It's already with you. It was put in you before you was created. That's you right. You were brought here for a reason. That's and right. So your purpose is already inside of you. But we get caught up in the nine to five so we can pay bills. We get caught mm -hmm. up because we're trying to put food on the table. And so mm -hmm. we literally forget about our purpose. We forget about the dream. We forget about the reason why we were created. 
because mm -hmm. we start now focusing on why this job was created, why this business mm -hmm. was created. The mm -hmm. business becomes our purpose. And that's what they want you to do. They want your job. They want it to become your purpose. They want you to focus on nothing else but what their agenda is. But right. when you get past the reason why real estate investing and, and investing and getting multiple streams of income is so important is because now you make this passive income. Now you don't have to focus on this nine to five anymore. Now it allows you now to focus on what God actually brought you to this world to fulfill. And he's, so he's I actually can have a hand in showing you the right way to do real estate and then showing you how to create more passive income in your life so that now you can go fully do what it was that God called you to do, then now I'm doing my part because that's what I was called to do. So now my calling is connected to your calling and your calling is connected to other people's callings. Absolutely. I truly believe in that. I believe in that. And and and, and, and the point you made about is that I understand that I had to do some self-study on myself to understand that the seed was already in me. Already it, in you know, it was already in me. I just didn't, I just wanted to, I just needed to have patience. You know what I'm saying? And also understand, I needed to know me. I didn't know who I was. Yeah. So now I know who I am. I had to do some self-studying and understand who I was and what I'm here for. And now it, it, here's a blessing that just came about. Who knew that you, you know, I'll be sitting here talking to you right now. God <laughs> you knew. Know? God knew. You know? Yeah, he that's knew, the only he, knew, he knew when he, when he put it in the man who ever made the, the cell phone. Who yeah, ever absolutely. made IG. He knew, That's right. he knew because that he put a purpose in that person. And then IG was going to bring people together and it was going to allow people to get exposed. And then all of a sudden he knew that when I was in the squad, I could uh, create and make real estate real. He knew that. And then he knew once ET was out there on the stage and CJ was on the stage, do, started ETA putting <laughs> together their platform, he knew that I would one day be connected with them. And then he knew that that we would uh, one day write a book and it'd be called Millionaire Moments. And on March 1st, 2021, he knew that you was going to come on here at this exact time. And then he knew that I was going to pour into you so that you can do what you do and pour into other people. Yeah. <laughs> Connect the dots, bro. Connect the dots, bro. Hey, that, that's what's up. obedience is connected I appreciate to so many it. other people's destiny. No, oh, I appreciate you, bro. Remember I really that. do, man. I oh, yeah, for sure. It's, yes, it's way deep. It's deep. You know, I appreciate that, you know, because... I believe that. <laughs> I truly do. So thank, thank you yeah, very much. I know it's other people. DM, bro, with your information, your email, and um, and I'm gonna have my assistant send you out the course, man. So you can get that thing tonight, and then you guys can, man, check it out, man. And you know, and so that you can hurry up and do what it is that God called you to do, because somebody's waiting. Your family is waiting on it, bro. You sure they gonna know who I? You sure they gonna know who I am? I send you Quinn at Quality Leashes. They gonna be like, we don't know who this is, Jamal. I, I don't know who they is, but I'm the one that does my do my own DM. Oh, that's I'm, what I'm, I'm real. <laughs> I'm real, bro. This ain't no. I'm real. So just shoot me a DM like, What's hey, up? this is so and so, so and so. You know, I got you. Even send me a screenshot of picture. So, cause you know, last time I did that, I had like a several other fake people like oh i was the one that you said send me make real estate real too i'm like wait a minute i told one person why am i gonna send <laughs> so yeah so yeah there you go screenshot send a picture bro so i can make sure it's really you i got you for sure hey, bro, it, hey bro. it's an honor and it's a privilege man to point to your destiny bro so that you can oh, point yeah. to other people all right oh thank you and let me tell you let my wife tell you bye because if it wasn't she, she was in it too Oh, God knew that too. God knew she was going to run up the stairs and she was going, he, he knew everything. He already had it played out, bro. Yeah, it's, it's already done. It was it's already done. done. I knew for your sure. name before you were even, before the earth was formed. And before it was formed, dig that. I appreciate it. Mm. Have a good one. Hey, thanks. Oh, screenshot it. Yeah, oh. screenshot. Send me a DM, bro. I'm about to get off. But man, let me see how you do this. You just hit, you got an X on your phone. Just go ahead and click that X. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got it. All right, right. Here. Hey, welcome to the Make Real Estate Real family, bro. <laughs> yep, thank you. Thank you. Right. Yep. Woo, man, y'all. Man, these calls be heavy. Yeah, it heavy, 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 heavy. My wife told me one more live. Last time she told me to come downstairs and come eat dinner. <laughs> so, Man, but look, we're going to save a bunch of this, man. Um, I'm going to end it on that note, man. Woo. Man, y'all, this is just, man, this is overwhelming. Um, just, man, seeing, like, you know, where I'm at right now in life and just how, you know, how, how my story, how my test 
has now become a testimony for others. Uh, I'm telling you, if you don't have the book, get the book, 9to5millionaire.com. Go there, you get the book, you get the audio book, you get the workbook, you get the, the, the ebook, you get the 16 video implementation uh, course. I mean, so much value, so much value, guys. So man, look, I'm telling you, man, um, if somebody said, listen to your wife, <laughs> Jamal, bro, thank you. You know what? All right, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to listen to my wife. Let me go ahead and grab one more person. Why don't she come on? How about that? Uh, let's see. Who we got on here? Oh, yeah. Let me get my boy on here. Eli. Let's see. He might be at the firehouse. Yep. Man, y'all, like I said, this has been crazy, man. This has been awesome. Uh, <laughs> What's up, man? Jamal, what's up, brother? Oh, bro, what's going on? You know, hanging at the fire station, man. Getting oh, yeah, doing I, I, my I thing. You're probably at the fire station. It's in uh, Arizona, right? Yes, Good. sir. Okay, Back okay. Arizona. Yep, how's everything? Phenomenal, man. Phenomenal. Very good. Yeah, so you're at your nine to five. Tell everybody who you are, you know. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I, I got that, got your book a while ago. I got it right off the bat. I loved, I absolutely loved the audio, man. Yeah, that was fire. Like, I listened to that thing over and over and over again. It, it's phenomenal and definitely uh, making strides. As far as that go, I've uh, renovated, uh, going on my fifth house now. Your fifth house. So, so stop. Uh, tell flipping. everybody, come on, you just can't say that, man. So tell everybody, you know, what you do for a living. I know already, of course, but tell everybody what you do. And, you know, yeah, yeah. where you at right now and what's your vehicle? You know, come on, break it all down. Somebody said you look like David Goggins. <laughs> yeah, I, the funny thing is I've, I've heard that a lot, and then my voice sounds like him too, so I get that quite often. My <laughs> wife absolutely hates it. She hates it. <laughs> but uh, been firefighter for 19 years uh, and absolutely been loving that. But uh, obviously, it, and my thing has always been helping people, like ever since before the fire service was to help people whatever way I could. So that's always been my thing, and that's what uh, allowed me to get into the fire service was the ability to help others, however I could. But I still, I, I don't, I don't make enough contact to to help enough people. I still want to help more people yeah. throughout what I do. So I also do a lot of, of fitness and this motivational stuff, uh, part of uh, BU. So through that, I've I've been fortunate enough to have a group of 125 people, um, and we do a little challenge, 75 hard challenge, but we got a bunch of group of people that are continually doing better to, you know, release weight, you know, it's a mental challenge. So definitely uh, becoming better, but uh, through that process and along with my partner, my firefighter, um, we have uh, fixed, we fixed and flipped two homes. Uh, we currently have a short term rental in Scottsdale, Arizona, okay, uh, which has been operating for just over a year. And now uh, the other property that we're working on is a rental property that he has, and he has basically uh, made me and my brother the, the GC on that. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently going through the general contractor's license process in Arizona. I nice. just passed the uh, states and uh, rules portion, and now I'm starting the general contracting portion started today. Wow. So nice. I'm looking to get that done in the next two weeks uh, to bust that out so I can uh, apply for that application and get that done. So now, so now, what's your end goal? Like, what's your destination? Like, why are you doing this? Like, somebody would say, man, you're a fireman. 19 years, you set, man. I mean, you got great benefits. You got job security. You know, I mean, it's, it is a great job. So, like, man, why are you investing yeah. outside of the fire department? Why don't you just buy into that? There's, there's a couple things. Uh, one, one has always been to, to help other people, and there's other means, other ways that I get to help people because the fire service doesn't allow me enough interaction with enough people. So I want to continue to help more people through, through whatever vehicle I can. I can. And I, I, I know the real estate because I have a passion for real estate, for building, for construction, and I also want to help my brother. Um, he has also been very interested in becoming you know own, owning properties and stuff like that so we, we would love to have 10 properties um five five to flip regularly and then five owning through vrbos or long-term rentals yeah yep. and just continue to help people i mean I, I love the fitness the mental challenge stuff so i'm always absolutely pushing people to be their best and do their best and that's just been my passion and, and now that my, my wife is also going through um 
She's in a doctoral program. Wow. For psych psychology, so so we're helping. We we can help more people, um, and, and you know the community around us, and just continue to uh, to help people and, and to become better. You know, just just on that on that work on to get on your level, and ET's level, and the whole podcast, man. I love the S2S <laughs> podcast. You guys are fire, absolutely. Every Thursday, everybody has to listen in. If you guys don't listen to the S2S podcast, whoo, that is fire. Everybody's oh. listening to that. Man, yeah, check it out this Thursday. We got Inky Johnson on there with us. Fire. Uh, I'm talking about it's just total all -star. fire going around. Total fire. But no, bro, like I said, every time um, you always, you know, shoot me a message and things like that, bro, I yeah. always appreciate it. I love the fact that, you know, you're a fireman, you're doing it. I was a police, Chicago police officer. And uh, so, you know, oh, I yeah. know what you guys, I'm hung up at the firehouse sometimes on midnight shift, you know. And so to see how, you know, I think a lot of people in Chicago, we always have two jobs. You never find a fireman that's just a fireman. You never find a police officer that's just a police officer. We always got Back. some other job or something else outside of it. And, uh, you know, and I, I go to different places, and it's not like that. And so, but the yeah. reason why is because we're always trying to do more. We're trying to do better. We're trying to, uh, yep. you know, invest and things like that. So, man, just stay safe out there, bro. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Uh, I mean, you guys, I be on. I, I look at your IG a lot of times. I see you out there running. You really do look like David Goggins. You got your shirt off. <laughs> and you're running just <laughs> like him, you know. But, no, but Appreciate keep that. doing what you're doing, man. It's big, you know. Yeah. Um, keep trying to help people. You know, you took an oath, you know, to serve and protect. Yes. You know. Yes, sir. And I think a lot of people think that that oath only means while you're punching in on your job. For those eight hours or for you oh, guys, sir. 24 hours, you we know. We do 48. You do 48? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. So you people believe that that oath is only for those that time period. But I mean, no. It's, 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 it's literally over and over. It's your life. You're taking that oath for life. And so what I did, I didn't break my oath when I left the police department, right? What I did, I yeah. just served and protected the community a little bit different. You know, I just Most served definitely. the community a different way now. And so I still say that I still serve and protect, you know. So, man, bro, hey, I know my wife thinking right now, bro, Chicago, Chicago Fire is our favorite uh, TV show that we watch. So I know that sign, that bell can go off at any moment. Or that, 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 oh, that yeah. sound can go off at any moment. So I don't want to hold you. But, man, I appreciate you. Right, appreciate the support. Appreciate you rocking, bro. And, um, man, I see you doing your thing, man. And like I said, you're an inspiration to me also. So, you know, I know what you're going through. I did 20 years on the police department. You were 19. So I know the level of dedication yes, and commitment that it takes. So keep going, bro. Keep going. I'm proud of yes, you. Yes, sir. Will do. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. All right. All right. <laughs> when he a smoke tick, better be familiar. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, y'all. All right. So, now, um, man, this has been a great segment. Um, chapter four, All Star, you know. Uh, just to recap, you know, you got to know the destination. All right, guys, you got to know the destination. That's where it always starts. You got to know the destination. And the reason why it's so important to know the destination is because you need to now, once you know the destination, you can choose the vehicle to go along with it. Imagine if I put you in a car and then packed your bags and then said, okay, go ahead, take off. And you like, uh, where am I going? You, you wouldn't have a clue. Or imagine if you like, um, how am I going to drive this vehicle to, to Hawaii? Like, I wanted to go to Hawaii. How can I go to Hawaii, Jamal, and you put me in a car? All right, cool. I need to know where you want to go first in order to pair the right vehicle. Now, not saying that I got to throw you directly into a plane or a boat to get you to Hawaii, but maybe let's take you in a vehicle and let's let you drive to the airport, right? Or let's put you in a vehicle and let you drive this vehicle all the way to California. And then now in California, now you're going to jump on an airplane now. And then now, you know, boom, this airplane right now is only going to take four hours from California to Hawaii. So once you know the destination, then you can pick the vehicle to get you there. See, football was a vehicle. And, and true, as you guys know, that read the book, I didn't make it to the NFL. So what? That vehicle still got me through college and it got me a full scholarship so i graduated from college without any debt so your vehicle when you know what your destination is you choose then several vehicles that can get you there 
All right. Um, yeah, and then boom, having multiple um, multiple vehicles to get you there. There's nothing wrong with having a seven-car garage. There's nothing wrong with that. You can have a seven-car garage. Every vehicle serves a purpose in your life. So, guys, what I want you guys to do is go back, and I want you to dream big, guys. Dream big. Trust me. Because one day, one day your dreams might become your reality. All right, this is the nine to five millionaire, and we're going over the nine to five millionaire. Don't quit your day job, and I'm gonna see y'all next week. Hey, guys, next week I'm bringing on a special guest, a very, very special guest. All right, so man, make sure you tune in and go tell all your people, man. All right, y'all, I'll see y'all on the podcast. Let's go.